and welcome to our January 2021 CPD on body language. Firstly, I hope you all had a enjoyable uh, but uh, nice and relaxed Christmas and New Year period. Um, obviously, we're we're back into difficult circumstances again with with limited football and, and, and huge restrictions on what we can do on a day to day basis. Hopefully, we'll be back on green stuff in no time. But in the meantime. Um, we're going to keep pumping out some of these CPDs for you to enjoy in your downtime and, and keep your mind focused and busy whilst we go on. So first one for this month will be focused on body language, which is going to be delivered by one of our FA uh, or County FA core coaches in, in Roger Coxhead. Um, so I will hand you over to Roger now. Roger, over to you. We will be covering referee skills, the importance of body language, the positive versus the negative of body language, and also, importantly, what's your body language? These four, these four skills of being a, being a referee, these are the four factors that are important. Laws of the game, physical fitness, mental fitness and management skills and body language is an important ingredient of number four and that's why we need to ensure that we get body language right so with body language, we must realise that it's a method of communicating. And body language covers postures, gestures, facial expressions, eye movement, and how you speak. And it's so important to show others how confident you are, how you emphasise with others and your attitude during that game. So with body language, it's important for you, pre-match and post-match, when dealing with colleagues, when actually dealing with club officials and don't forget club assistants, and also players, which is an obvious statement, but one that body language is very important to. Body language will get you a reaction from human beings in different forms, sometimes through a subconscious response, which can be subtle and unintentional. So that's why body language is important. So how you speak, how you gesture, how you express yourself with gestures and posture and eye contact will be picked up by others in some form or other. So let's let's go during a game. Captains. Do you currently show captains that you're interested in being a referee for this game? Do you engage them in helping with potential players' problems? Do you, you know, you always it always depends on the attitude of the captain, obviously. Don't flog a dead horse when someone isn't showing any interest. You'll probably tell by their body language for a start. So you need to try and be with, your, with a captain. You need to be open and try to build a relationship during the game. And pre-match is when you can do it at the toss of a coin. Regarding decision-making, do you make decisions with confidence? Do you, or do you give the impression you're not confident or not interested? Again, it will be picked up. Dealing with players in various situations. That's another key part, which we will deal with later. Do you show respect to players with your voice, posture, eye contact and gestures when dealing with them? Remember, I keep repeating these things, these posture, eye contact and gestures and voice. That's so important. To remember.
we will now look at how to make a positive impact. Be yourself, but understand your weaknesses. An area we can all learn from is rugby referees. They treat players in an adult manner. And that is a way forward for referees in football as well. Don't be aggressive. Never say go away or shut up. Again, you know I'm going to say it, gestures and posture are important. And what we're looking at here on this slide is don't try and be someone you are not. If you are a chatty referee, don't overdo it. If you're a silent referee, don't overdo it. They use body language skills to your advantage. And importantly, always know and tell players, club officials, when asked, why you've decided on a decision. Body language can be important in helping sell a decision. So with this slide, do you know how you use body language when you're doing a team talk with colleagues, receiving team sheets? Are you showing an interest when giving signals for restarts? Are you confident? What do you look like when making tough decisions? Do you look apologetic or do you look confident? How you look to players in misconduct situations? Are you really, again, treating them like an adult, being firm but fair? And how do you give the impression of someone in control and being a leader? That's what body language is about. The going gets tough sometimes. You've got to show that you're still in control. Or are you someone who has no confidence, doesn't care? Because players, and spectators will soon pick it up. And this slide, though it's a, a, bit, a bit busy with words, it's useful you, for you to understand. Body language is useful in a noisy match, match day environment. Body language can also have an immediate effect, reducing the need for a referee to stop a match to address an issue verbally. Finally, it's sometimes difficult to address players' emotions in words, so gestures can be used instead. Body language should be changed to suit the situation. It is a form of communication. It needs to be natural and kept fluent. You have to use the right quality and quantity of body language during a game. Otherwise, you will force yourself into a character which you are not, and players will soon perceive this. So, continuing, again, it's wordy, but it's important. It does allow you to express thoughts, intentions, and your state of mind through signs which mean that you will be understood when you share them. Body language is a very powerful tool, but you have to be careful in using it. Certain body language is linked to different interpretations. You might be misunderstood. You have to be aware of cultural differences. A referee use of body language can establish relationships on the field with the players. While all remaining in, whilst still remaining in control of a match, it can show confidence, calmness, firmness, authority, or even the hu referee's human side, if a player is injured, as an example. But I emphasize again, you have to make reasonable use of body language. It's one of the tools of management of a game. Because players may, might start to perceive that you're more of a friend than as a leader. Use body language to enhance performance, show leadership, enhance game management skills, such as mediating and creating a connection. And 
to win trust and respect from players. So you don't have to show off or exaggerate. You have to remain yourself. Now this slide is, you may seem strange, but it's very important. This, in my opinion, is how you crack body language as a person. By looking at yourself, you will see how you are viewed. Once you see how you look in, a different, in different situations, your gaze, your gestures, your postures, your facial expressions, your voice, they will all be seen by the important person, you. And what happens is, when you do look at yourself, you will see how you look, and you will either think, that's great, or you think, God, that looks rubbish. So the important thing is once you think and believe that that is a right form of body language for you in a certain situation, your mind, I, will have an image that you start using in real life. And that's the important thing. But as I've saying here, but do it on your own. Don't do it in a public place. And, and finally, just as a summary, part of this is part of management skills. It's a form of communicating. Who is your audience? Pre-match, post-match, and during the match. Be yourself. Knowing when should it be used. And finally, remember the mirror. Big thank you there to Roger Cogsheads for that quick uh, overview on body language and how it can have such an impact on on how you are perceived on the field of play, um, and how it can aid your your overall match control as well and uh, and, and your progression as a referee. Uh, thank you again to, to Roger for taking the the time uh, out of his busy schedule to to record this for us, and hopefully when we are allowed back back out onto the field of play you can take into consideration the facts that he's discussed and we'll build upon them as we come into further development sessions over the next sort of 12 months um, and add more depth into what Roger has discussed as well to give us more of a, a, an insight as we progress further down the field. That's it for this session thank you very, very much for listening um, and uh, enjoy uh, your, your time uh, away from the field of play thank you.